This is the Zubina and Nazo Fanzel and Anjo Fabrema. And this is one is the stage one. And that I did it without any embolization or uh, embolization. And again, uh, embolization, embolization, preferably I don't go for the embolization because of the two reasons. One is the embolization gives you some of the residual tissue after the dissection because it gives the avascular area. So, avascular area remains behind after the surgical surgery. False sense of security. False sense of security. That's why embolization nowadays, embolization is totally be, be out, of the, out of the surgical procedure. That is one reason. Another reason is where you are working. Whether you are working in the pathological tissue or the normal tissue. Because feeding vessels, that are vessels also gives the uh, give supply to the pathological tissue as well as the normal tissues. So, once you go for the dissection, you may cut the normal tissues as the tissue is, does not bleed. So, that's why this gives the false sense of security to, on two reasons. One, you are cutting the normal tissues, also you are leaving the pathological tissues. That's why it is better to have the surgery without embolization nowadays and many surgeons are doing the surgery without embolization even if it is intracranial extension because as you know is the retrosternal thyroid just i i compare it with the retrosternal thyroid the retrosternal thyroid gets its blood supply through the inferior thyroid artery so if you block the inferior thyroid here you can take out the mass exactly the nasopharyngeal and angiopharyngeal gets its blood supply through the sphenopalatine artery mainly. Some of the vessels are coming from the internal carotid artery and that has to be addressed by the MRA clearly. If it is clearly indicated, then you can go for the, um, uh, go for the cauterization on that part particularly after that step by step dissection. So, what the step by step dissection? It goes through the inferior orbital fissure, it goes through the superior orbital fissure, it goes through the pterygopalatine fissure, it goes through the pharyng uh, pharyngomaxillary fissure. So, these are the fissures where they can travel. So, you are addressing all the fissures in the skull base, then you can address the uh, angiofibroma. Angiofibroma, if I get, if, if we get, it is a fear developed earlier than going for the surgery. But the blood supply is this. There is a collateral circulation and now the internal carotid artery, why I am telling? Because some of the collateral circulation and the long standing cases, there is a fibrosis. This fibrosis going to the dura and then it gets is attached. I did one surgery here in the neurosurgery department and that was in the cavern nasanas. And that was embolized and was the recurrent case. And that was completely, and uh, day before yesterday, the patient came to me uh, for the follow-up. The patient has not recovered. So, this is the part of the embolization or not the embolization. Just have a look to the CT scan. Here's the CT scan. This is the mass on the left side. See on the right side, the, the hole is in the nasopharynx. Just the pterygopalatine fissure, a, a bit. Is just a glimpse of the mass was present. This is a sagittal view. Again, this is soft tissue window. And always, again, the, for the CT scan. If you go for the CT scan, order for the CT scan, you give bony windows as well as the soft tissue window. Only the bony window does not reveal all the pathological structures. So once you go for the CT scan, advice for the CT scan, make a short history and give for the instruction that I want bone and soft tissue windows and also another thing is to be instructed to the uh, technician otherwise that i want 0.6 millimeter or 1 millimeter or 3 millimeter cut because you need to know each millimeter section so that you can get the feeding vessels on others pathology so you want to know the pathology by 3 millimeter 1 millimeter there is a change in pathology so if you if you remove the bit of tissue, single bit of, the last bit of tissue, then you need to have the millimeter section. That's why, and you have to instruct first that I need 0.3 millimeter, 0.6 millimeter, 1 millimeter, or 3 millimeter. In all the cases, it does not require. But in certain cases, you need to have this idea clearly so that 
again the surgical surgical procedure can be made by half so what you have observed here the area in the spinopalatine area was uh, was uh, cauterized by the bipolar and at the same time i used the micro debrider so that all the tissue come out there is no tissue remains behind in the area of the spinopalatine region that's why i use the i use the micro debrider as well i use the micro debrider though it is so risky you use the because i have a 120 blade 120 blade you can go you use the 120 blade on that area so that you can remove the whole of this and once i go for the uh, uh, using the micro debrider there was a tremendous bleeding you see the sprouting bleeding that also controlled by clipping again use that one and uh, i have the uh, clipper i have the clipper my at my own so i can use the you, once you have the instrument you can control any hair exposure is very important yes yes so uh, everybody is going for the conservative surgery conservative surgery keeping the tissue intact so earlier dose all these things uh, you know so over ferguson lateral rhinotomy and others now people are going to preserve the tissues as far as possible and practicable but not compromising with the recurrence of the disease disease clearance as far as possible and practicable keeping the functioning tissue intact keeping in mind the surgery is going at that part that part so this is the precision this is the precision that's why the machines are coming and these machines are your friendly instruments friend friend or assistant otherwise so this is the whole mass you see the bony part that is the uh, professor babur was uh, telling the uh, spinopalatine region that is the bony part you see and that is the mass the whole of this coming at mass uh, actually i uh, told you at the beginning the angiofibroma they traverses through the foraminous there is the foraminous that is the hall mark that is the principle if it remains steleocarp in and around the spinopalatine foramen it remains in the nasal coena it remains in the posterior part remains in the coena if it goes mid laterally it it harbors in the pterygopalatine fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa as you know the boundary of the pterygopalatine fossa anteriorly the posterior wall of the maxilla posteriorly is the spinopalatine uh, spino, uh, sorry uh, spinoid Uh, pterygoid process and the spino uh, spinoid sinus there is a spinoid uh, spinoid wall and posterior medially it goes to the lateral aspect of the brain that is the in, uh, skull base so that is the part of the stero uh, pterygopalatine fossa once the pterygopalatine fossa it goes laterally it has got two extension one is the anteriorly anteriorly it bulges the anterior uh, posterior wall of the maxilla it bulges the posterior wall of the maxilla that is the hallmark sign and if it goes through if, if even if it not lodges in that it goes through the uh, pharyngo maxillary fissure and going to the infratemporal fossa and once the, it goes to the infratemporal fossa it remains in the sick so that is the one side going the other side going if it goes to the infra, inferior orbital fissure and also the superior orbital fissure it goes to the cavernous sinus so this is the natural foraminas natural foraminas what the it what traverses it does not break the bone it does not break the bone only what it is the pressure necrosis it is the pressure and that gives the thinning thinning of the bone by this time that is the natural aneurysm again it makes a clear area of dissection that is the wall and once you pull it pull it pull it if you go and expand the expand the fissure or the foramina then if you pull it then it comes out very yes, easily there is, there is 